session. Uh, I want to uh, announce the results of the. That uh, Madam Mandana Puri gave you uh, 40 questions that I sent. They were difficult questions. They were quite difficult questions, and I'm very pleased that many of them correct. Unfortunately, not everybody can be a winner. So everybody is a winner because everybody tried and everybody did. All of you are winners. OK, amongst the winners are the top two winners, which are. Uh, 23 near Chicago. Anjali will get an autograph copy. Of the Cotran pathologic base of disease and Yashika will get the autograph copy of basic pathology, which is this. So now that. Uh, uh, let me also mention that two others who were very close, Ujala Sharma and Shalu Singh. Congratulations to all of you. OK, now we begin. We begin. Begin by tell you telling you a small story. It's true story. Eh? Uh, you believe me, OK? By the way, I want to tell you your Madam Vandana is very cruel, OK? She made me go through multiple hoops to get to this place. I get a PhD in this. I'm not going to get a PhD in this. It's too late. <laughs> I am technologically very challenged, OK? So um, um, forgive me if I make errors. Transmission and let me know if it happens. Uh, Vandana, you'll. I am there, sir. I'll be supporting you each and every step wherever okay. you need me. <laughs> I'm sorry for that, sir. <laughs> okay, you know, I want to start with a story. It's a true story, absolutely. The story is this that, you know, several months ago, uh, a very prominent person received a threat from a terrorist. Okay. Unless you do this thing, you will be killed or unless you give us this, you'll be killed. OK, obviously that person was very worried, very, very worried. So, you know, he went to Delhi and said, who are, who's the best private detective here? So they said, oh, sir, no problem. Okay. So, so this is the story called Ekta Jasus. So this is the Jasus in Delhi who was asked to go find out who was threatening, who were terrorizing this poor man, well-known man, but otherwise very simple man, very poor man. So up, you go find out. So his investigations, actually her investigations, you see that the detective is a woman. Her investigations led to this city, which has this temple. And in this particular city, what did he, what did, what did he, what did she find? She found this picture on Instagram. This picture of the terrorist who was standing outside this room looking for Dr. Vinay Kumar, thinking that this is his office. Alas, that is not his office. It was the wrong place, Vandana. That was the room in which he used to stay when he was in Medical College Amritsar. Anyway, so 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 as you can see, your Madam Vandana has multiple rooms. Part time terrorist bhi karti hai, pata kar lena, se. OK, and I'm sure she terrorizes students. So if 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 they terrorize you, just send me an email and I'll send the same detective to find. OK, OK, anyway, uh, so uh, to be honest with you, this is how it, the whole thing started. I got this picture from a colleague at Amritsar where she had gone as an examiner and you know, and I said, who is this person? And you know, there were actually two or three. Each one of them, you know, differently. OK, and this is this person. This is this person. This is from Patiala. This is from here and so on and so forth. OK, so, you know, I, I got in. I, I said I want to get in touch with uh, this young lady who is uh, standing under standing outside my former hostel room. Uh, and, you know, the way they put the plaque, it looks like I, 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 I'm, I'm inside and I'm actually I live inside a work inside. OK, on, on the bottom in very, very small letters, it says batch of 1962 1967 okay. so tell then, you one thing many of the messages which came to me were uh, does her stay here still now <laughs> is it so <laughs> anyway so that is how i got to know vandana okay and we started to talk and talk about pathology and various other things and so on and so forth and so in the process you know uh, she said, well, would you be able to come and address uh, our, our students? 
Uh, I said, yes, I can, I'm happy to do that. And there are many things I can talk about, but we finally agreed that I'm going to talk about the history of Robin's pathology. Okay. And I hope that you will find it interesting. It also has a history of myself in, in the process. Uh, and, and again, I hope you'll find it interesting and, and useful. Okay. okay, so next we go. So I want to talk to you, my, my title of my talk is very long, Past, Present and Future of Pathology as seen from the evolution of Robin's pathology. Really, the story of Robin's pathology is the story of pathology, certainly pathology education around the world. And I'm sure you know that. Okay. And by the way, on the left side, on one side of the screen, you see this beautiful fountain, uh, and it is uh, in a very nice big park uh, in in Chicago, uh, not far from where I live. On the other side is the uh, insignia of University of Chicago. I hope you'll come to Chicago. Some of you will come to Chicago. I'll be happy to take you to the university as well as show you this wonderful fountain. So at the outset, I want to dedicate this talk to the medical students of India and rest of the world for giving me the inspiration and energy to continue writing the books. Writing books is very, very hard. I, I, most people don't realize how, how tedious it is, how long it takes, you know. To revise an edition takes two years okay? because you basically almost read the whole thing all over again, make a sentence change here, a sentence change there, etc., etc. So the only reason one can keep on doing it is because you give me the feedback, you the students, the users, the faculty, tell me that you like it, you find it useful, and that provides the energy to keep on continuing. Of course, I'm also very, very grateful to my teachers, uh, many of them in India, and the, particularly the pathology department at Amritsar, where I decided that I was going to be my pathologist for all the knowledge they gave me, and I hope I'm, I am, I'm giving them my Guru Dakshina by imparting knowledge to others. OK. So I, I want to sort of start this by giving you a little quotation, which is medical history teaches us where we come from, where we stand in medicine at the present time, and in what direction we are marching. It is a compass that guides us in the future. Unfortunately, History of medicine is not really taught or discussed in any medical colleges now. Uh, there used to be many, many years ago, history of medicine used to be a little module for four, five, six lectures uh, where people were to read about the, the history, how we came where we are. And I think as it says here, history tells us where we came from, where we stand today, and where we will go in the future. It gives us a context, it gives us a background. It gives us a background and I think it's good. I hope some of you will be encouraged to go read about history of medicine, you know, in history of medicine around the world, you know, history of medicine in India, for example. India has a very rich history uh, in the past uh, in medicine. So I hope that uh, this history that I will tell you about Robin's pathology will fit in that same idea. Okay. So who was Stanley Robbins? He was born in 1915 and died in 2003. He was born in a, in, a, in a state of the US called Maine, in a city called Portland. He graduated at the top of his class from Brookline High School in Brookline, Massachusetts. He subsequently went to MIT and Tufts Medical School, delivering valedictorian addresses at both schools. Valedictorian is the person who has the highest marks, the, the person who's first in the class. So he was a brilliant student. He trained in pathology at Boston City Hospital and, the, and then joined the faculty at Boston University School of Medicine, where he practiced as a surgical pathologist and conducted research in coronary artery disease and reproductive endocrinology. He also taught second year medical students. Now, many people think that Robbins, the only thing he did in his life was to write this book. No, not at all. He was actually a very good researcher. He very early studies on the platelet, uh, uh, role of platelets in coronary thrombosis. And he actually devised the first test for what is called sort of the uh, frog test, okay, in which uh, you you take the, you know, urine from pregnant females and inject them into something else and then you see ovulate. Then that became a rabbit test and so on and so forth. And he also taught to medical students. So, so he's a brilliant man, okay? 
and he joined the Department of Pathology at Boston City Hospital. In so Dr. Robbins is sitting on the mic left. I don't know, it could be your, your, the person who has a bow tie, okay? Youngish guy, bow tie. Okay. Um, the other guy was wearing a regular tie, but he's wearing a bow tie. So, so in, he joined Boston City Hospital as his first academic appointment in 1944. It so happens that I was born in the year 1944. Okay. Or he know that we would we would eventually eventually meet. People sitting in this uh, in this group here are were all sort of eminent pathologists of that time. Boston City Hospital was one of the leading departments of pathology in the country at that time, okay, and still remains so. Includes people like you know Jackson Mallory. You heard Mallory's highlight. It's named after Dr. Mallory, who was at the at the Boston City Hospital. And that Department of Pathology is now called the Mallory Department of Pathology, okay, or Mallory Institute of Pathology. So he was in the company of very, very distinguished pathologists uh, and a very, very, you know, uh, excellent group of people. So he, Dr. Robbins described in an article published in, I think, believe it was 1984, about the beginning of Robbins pathology which happened between the years 1950 and 1957. So he wrote, as a young and bushy-tailed member of the faculty at the Boston University School of Medicine, I was heavily engaged in lecturing, but was increasingly dissatisfied with the texts available to students. While all had redeeming qualities, all, in my view, played descriptive morphology, as would be useful for professional pathologists rather than students. An insufficient emphasis on the correlation of the morphologic changes with their clinical significance. That is the resultant clinical symptoms and signs. And what, what, what Robbins noticed was that the quote at that time were all very heavy on describing morphological features. Okay. You know, gross, micro, etc., etc., etc. You know, kind of details which we require for somebody who's going to do diagnostic work, not students who are going to become doctors with multiple specialties. And Robbins felt that pathology should be connected to the practice of medicine and, and their clinical significance. And that was missing in many of the books at that time. He used to jokingly say, lesions don't arise in cadavers, or lesions arise in living people. So why is it that the focus of Pathology is autopsy pathology, for example, which was very, very big at that time. Because of this belief of his, between 1950 and 1957, he wrote the first edition of the book, which was at that time called Textbook of Clinical Path Textbook of Pathology with Clinical Applications. He, he made it uh, clinical applications. He was very he, he was very sure that people understood that this was not just descriptive pathology, descriptive pathology, but also pathology with clinical pathology correlations. Now, things you take for granted right now, that's the way pathology is taught in the world right now. That was not the case in that. We memorize gross, micro features, subtle features here and there, this stay in this, that stay in this, and so on and so forth. Now, this book was humongous. 1,350 pages. Nine, almost 1,000 illustrations. And who was the author? One single author. One single author, Stanley Robbins. You can go to the library and search for major textbooks. The only other book that you will find, which was written by a single author and very became very popular, was Guidance Physiology. Everything else was multiple. That was Robbins' passion. That was his belief. It was his conviction that this is important to do. And so he himself. So in the preface of, <clears throat> of the book he wrote, but the study of morphology is only one facet of pathology. <clears throat> pathology contributes much to clinical medicine. The pathologist is interested not only in the recognition of structural alterations, which is morphology, but also in their significance, that is the effects of these changes function and ultimately the effect of these changes on the patient. 
This is not a discipline isolated from the living patient, but rather a basic approach to a better understanding of disease and therefore a foundation of sound clinical medicine. So, so Robbins felt that the study of pathology, okay, it should lead you to understand medicine better and practice medicine better. And he said in one, one of his uh, essays, the why and how are as important as what signifies morphology, why is etiology, and how is pathogenesis. So those are as important as the descriptive morphology. So when the book was first published in 1957, the public to, you know, the eminent pathologists of that time. And this is what they heard. Two senior pathology academic giants were strongly negative. They're strongly negative since there was not enough descriptive morphology and too heavy clinical. But a Temple University medical student, Temple University is in Philadelphia, a medical student wrote to the publishers, I have begun reading my new Robin sex book. I know someone up there loves me, which means you're saying, I know there's a God there who loves me. So look at the sharp contrast between how the students felt and how the senior pathologists felt. And Robbins subsequently told me that he was very reviewed by the senior pathology uh, academic giants because if they had said this is a good book, then he had failed. Because then it would mean that he just wrote another book just like the other books there. So he was pleased that the students accepted it and the professor's initial reaction was this is this is not pathology. Okay. Anyway, rest of it is as they say history. Uh, the teaching of pathology changed as Robin's book became the basically the syllabus of pathology in most medical schools in the world, even now, for example. So, so that is how it, the whole thing began, and that was the conviction, the passion of Dr. Robbins. He was, a very, he was a man who was sort of very used to cracking jokes, and I'll show you other examples of that. Well, I, I, this, this, my screen is being cut, uh, but he, he, there's a quotation there. It says, well, damn it, gentle people, if you can't recognize acute and chronic, non-specific, multiple this, 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 this. It was a joke that pathologists, the less they know about something, the longer there's a the description. Okay? They're just so focused on describing, describing, describing. So, as as many of you probably know, if you have read the book, there are jokes scattered scattered throughout the book. This was also something Robbins did, and here is one example. This is in the section on pigmentation, in I think in one of the first chapters. Uh, it says that tattooing now largely out of style, which of course is now back in style, may cause a dull, an innocuous but sometimes embarrassing nature. Distressing property of persisting in situ throughout life in dermal macrophages, creating difficulties if one wishes to marry Alice, and when the tattoo says Mary. Okay. He, doesn't have, he didn't have to write this joke. All he was saying was that tattoo is an indigestible dye, or PM, okay, which gets taken up by uh, macrophages which then are long lived, okay? it can't be digested, and they live, live for a very, very long time. That is all he was trying to say, but he said this in the form of a joke. So the students felt there's somebody talking to them, or they were working hard at 2 a.m. in the morning, you read this thing, and they smile. And Robbins did this deliberately. He wrote his books in a very conversational style, as if he was having a conversation with the students. So early years of Robin's pathology. In 1957 was the first edition. In 1962 was the second edition. In 1956 67 was the third edition. In the third edition, he added a chapter on genetic diseases, which was way ahead of his time because the human karyotype had been really discovered only about 10 years before that, late 50s and so on and so forth. Robin was very forward thinking. 
he knew that genetics is going to play a very important role in disease pathogenesis. So he chose to write a new chapter in, in, in the third edition of his book on genetics. So although Robbins was by now the dominant text, Robbins was not satisfied. He took another daring step. I want you to understand and appreciate that Robbins could have just continued the way he was, you know, fourth edition, fifth edition, sixth edition. No, 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 no. That was not what he did. He took another daring step. What he did was, before he published a brand new book, Pathologic Base of Disease, first edition, 1974, the 10th edition of this book, which is actually 10th plus three, 13th edition, if you count the first three editions of his first book. So what did Robbins do? He rewrote the book completely. And he wrote, rewrote the book completely because by that time, a lot had been learned about biochemistry of diseases and you know things had been learned. And he wanted to focus the book on mechanism of disease. It is pathogenesis, pathophysiology. And this was the focus of the book. It was not the previous book just modified, it was rewritten completely from scratch. Again, single author, Stanley Roy. The passion of the man. I, of course, I had the good fortune of knowing him. Okay, He was just so intensely passionate about pathology and teaching pathology Okay, that he would go to any degree to do something which he truly believed in. And he truly believed the time had come to emphasize more and more disease mechanisms because disease mechanisms help you understand how the disease and then also help you understand what the clinical features might be, which in, in turn helps you understand how to treat the disease. So in 1974, he published this new new first edition of, 19, in, in, of this book, which was actually the fourth edition, if you count it from the scratch. Okay. So it was a very bold move by him. Again, single author. He didn't ask anybody else to join him at that time. But then, and uh, the first edition of uh, this pathologic base of disease was completely written single author, more focused on mechanisms. And of course, the general pathology section increased from five, from 500 pages to 545 pages, which is, that is where we were learning most about disease mechanisms. But this was just the beginning of Robbins was never satisfied. Despite the fact he had great success, people loved his book. Nobody said change it, modify it. But he truly believed that more things had to be done. And then what happened? He, he, the second edition of pathologic base of disease comes. And now for the first time, for the first time since 1950, and this was 1979, for the first time, so you can see this second edition was 1979, for the first time he took a co-author. The co-author was Ram, Dr. Ramsey Kutran. Why did he do that? He did that because he felt that he was no longer himself studying disease mechanisms. He was not actually doing any research on disease mechanisms. And he thought that the focus of the book was on disease. So he should have someone who is an actual, who is a pathologist, but also an investigator. Okay. Robin's investigative career ended many, many years ago. And he felt that he was he was he was deficient in it. It takes a great man to re realize, to acknowledge that there is something that he needs to ask somebody else to help. So he called us Ramsey Kutra. So the second edition of Pathologic Basal Disease was 1979 and published, uh, written by Robbins and Kutra. This is Dr. Ramsey Kutra, okay? A person who became almost like my elder brother. So Ramsey Cotran was born uh, what 15 years later, younger than Robbins. Unfortunately, he died in 2000 because of a metastatic melanoma. He was born in Haifa in Palestine in 1932. He went to medical school at an American University of Beirut in Lebanon, which is a very fine university. I visited that. 
Then he came to Boston to do residency in pathology at the Boston City Hospital where Dr. Robbins was, okay, from 1956 to 1959. And then he joined the faculty of Harvard Medical School from 1960 to 74, based first in Boston City Hospital, and then subsequently in 1974, he moved to the Department of Pathology at the Brigham, and Brigham Hospital, which is one of the finest pathology departments or hospitals actually in the world. Pathology departments in the world. It was all Dr. Ramsey Cotran who really did that okay, between 74 and 2000. So, so what was special about Ramsey Cotran? Ramsey Cotran was trained as a renal, renal pathologist. He was a pioneer investigator. He was the first one who showed that pyelonephritis in most cases is ascending disease. The infection comes from lower urinary tract towards the kidney. He was amongst the first people to demonstrate that glomerular permeability dependent on the charge of the baseband membrane. He was amongst the first people to show, along with Dr. Udo Mino, in that in acute inflammation, the changes occur in microvasculature. Increased permeability occurs in post capillary venules. He was also with Judah Folkman, the first person to describe angiogenesis is an important part of the uh, life of, of, of a tumor, which of course you know now that, uh, and then of course he described the endothelial molecules, molecules, you know, which are selectins and, and, and integrins and so on, which you know a lot more about right now. Okay? He was the one who discovered these things. Okay? And and you can see the application. Angiogenesis is now understood to be a very important part of tumor progression. The anti used, okay, and of course, endothelium has become very central to many diseases. He was also an outstanding diagnostic pathologist, and he was the most every society that <laughs> every society of any connection with pathology or or nephrology. And he was called a pathologist pathologist, which is said, you know, when pathologists needed advice, they would call Ramsey Kutran. And he was so gracious, so generous, he would never say no to anybody. Anybody who called him for advice, somebody who was writing a research grant to review that, somebody who was writing a paper to review that, and people, other people who had difficulty in certain aspects of pathology, they would all call him because he was so brilliant, but not just brilliant, he was also very giving at the same time. So what did what are the kind of changes that Ramsey, Ramsey Kutran brought to the book? He added hard science to the book, which is exactly why Robbins wanted him. He wanted a scientist to join the book, scientists and pathologists. For example, he now had three pages on free radical injury in cell injury chapter. Of course, we know now free radicals are involved in many, many human diseases, many, many. Not just cell injury, for Alzheimer's disease, and you, you name it. Re, re, reperfusion injury in the heart, for example. And he, he wrote five pages on the chemical mediators of inflammation. Now, medical students hate this thing because they have to memorize them. But, but I hope you appreciate many of the anti-inflammatory drugs that we use today are based on understanding how these cyclooxygenases and lipooxygenases and prostaglandins and leukotrienes, how they're formed and what do they do? So he brought a new vision to the book and it was a blend of Robin's style. The style still remained the same. And Ramsey Cotran's science, a new, more exciting, more invigorating Robin's had emerged. Okay. So in 1982, Dr. Robin retired from the uh, Boston City Hospital. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I, I don't know if I can, my, oh, I have a pointer. Okay, good, good. So this is Dr. Robbins, and this is Dr. Ramsey Kutran. He was head of the pathology department there, and there are other people here, many of whom are now very big names in the pathology world. Okay. So, now, while all of this is going on, Dr. Robbins writes another book, Basic Pathology, with, with Marsha Angel. Marsha Angel was a medical student at Boston University, and eventually she became a co-author with him. So why did he write another book? 
So he wrote he wrote it as an explanation in the preface of basic pathology, the first edition of which was published in 1971. Of books as well, there's a he always had jokes in what he, serious things he said. Of books as well as men, it may be observed that fat ones contain thin ones inside, struggling to get out. <clears throat> in a sense, this book bears such a relationship towards more substantial progenitor <coughs> problem pathology. It are also an appreciation of the modern medical students dilemma. As the curriculum has become restructured to place greater emphasis on clinical experience, time for reading is correspondingly curtailed. <clears throat> so what did he say? He said rare and esoteric lesions are omitted without apology. Okay, rare, rare congenital malformations uh, and rare diseases were just omitted, not written at all. And infrequent or trivial ones described only briefly. <clears throat> but he felt it is important, however, to consider rather fully the major diseases, major disease entities. So if you compare the inscription, for example, of myocardial infarction and the big robins, the baby robins, it's more or less the same. Because that's a very important disease, and Robbins didn't want to cut down on important diseases. He made the, he made the decision of what were uncommon and probably not so important for a medical student. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> those are those are removed, and then others which were min, sort of given some brief descriptions, but major diseases were still covered in full detail. <clears throat> so this is the uh, you uh, the my my screen. You can see it says 1972, and so this is a picture of the faculty at the Boston City Hospital in 1972 when Dr. Robbins sitting in the middle here, Dr. Cotran is sitting here, and this is Dr. Gottlieb who later on became department chairman. And, and these are some of them are residents and others are faculty, okay. Now, 72 is an important because I joined the Department of Pathology in, in Boston in 1972 after having finished my MD at Ames. Uh, Ames, Ames, Delhi. Oh, to Austin to do research. I was interested in leukemogenesis, carcinogenesis, and very fortunately for me, within the almost within two years, I was able to, along with my other colleagues, able to publish this very important paper on the genetic resistance to leukemia in mice. Basically, without going into details, we discovered that in new cell type, not T cells, not B cells, non macrophages, were involved in resistance against leukemia in mice. These cells were substituted to other groups of people found the same thing, and collectively we decided they will be called natural killer cells, NK cells. So, so as I said, I was very fortunate. I was able within the two years of being there, making make, making such an important discovery, which has occupied my entire research career after that. I've spent my entire career after that working on NK cells, the receptors, the signaling, and of those. So, in, so after publishing this paper and a couple of others after that, uh, in 1976, I got in my NIH uh, first NIH grant. Uh, which I kept till until you know 2012 13, and and in 1979, I had published many papers, more papers in leading journals. Okay, and uh, I had obtained a grant, and this was my lab at that time. I had a senior technician, Mary Carol Barnes, and my first MD PhD student. John Lust, who's now a professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic. And that's, of course, me, of course. Believe me, I actually had this much hair at one time. So, life was beautiful. I was successful. I had students. I had smart people working with me. I was publishing more and more papers. What more could, I, could one ask for? Well, then one day in 1917, Dr. Robbins called me to his office that he threw was a lightning bolt on me. Dr. Robbins here, 
and this is me here. Okay. And what happened? He said to me, he used to call me Vinny. Vinny, in, a, in another year or two, I'm going to retire. I wonder if you would be able to co author on my textbook. Me? I was shocked. I couldn't believe what I was doing. You know, I was just speechless for almost like a full one or two minutes. So, you know, he said, look, you know, this is a very important thing, important decision that uh, you have to make and and uh, you should not mm, hurry to tell me your answer. And that your concern will be that you will have less time for research because I used to see Dr. Robbins writing textbooks. I mean, he was spending God knows how many hours every every day, every week. So I said, thank you very much, sir, of course. And then I walked out and talked, met one of my senior colleagues, Dr. Michael Bennett. And he said, you know what happened? I mean, he literally saw I was shaken. He said, what happened? I said, you know, Dr. Robbins called me into his office and said that he wants me to be co-author with him. And he said, what did you say? I said, I have to think about it. He said, you're an idiot. How can you say no to something like this? People, many senior pathologists were salivating to be asked by Robbins to 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 uh, uh, to be to be co-author, co and you have been in a plate, and you have to think about it. But I said, you know, sure, I can do it. And one of the best gifts Dr. Michael Bennett gave me was to tell me you can do it. He was senior to me. You probably saw an author of that paper that I showed you earlier, Michael Bennett. He said you can do it. It's not impossible. I said OK, if it's not impossible, then it's not impossible. So that is how I joined him. And the first book he asked me to work with was Basic Pathology. Because that was next in line for publication. So in 1981, the third edition of this basic pathology came with uh, uh, three names. Robbins. Uh, my pointer, Robbins, Angel and Kumar. Angel is Marsha Angel. A Marsha Angel uh, was actually. She was no longer actually working. Uh, she had left and joined the New England Journal of Medicine. I don't know. I'm sure the faculty and postgraduate New England Journal of Medicine, the premier medical journal in the world. And she had the dis distinction of being the first chief of New England Journal of Medicine. So she left and became editor of NEG. And it was basically Dr. Robbins and myself who were left. And th then then over the, the in the fourth edition, uh, it was uh, third edition. You saw was uh, three of us: Robbins, Angel, and Kumar. And then the fourth edition, uh, Re Rob Marsha Angel left, so it was Kumar. And in the fifth edition, Dr. Ramsey Kotran joined us and became the Kumar Kotran Robbins. Okay, and then sixth, seventh. 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th edition is currently in press. And I'll tell you more about <clears throat> the, my co-authors in there. So what was it that I brought to basic pathology workbook? Since I was a serious molecularly, I brought more and more disease mechanisms, molecular based of disease. I'm also having trained in India, we, we had to draw you know, we would see a slide scope, then we have to draw the cells and and and, and uh, this organelles and nuclei and so forth. So, you know, I got very good at actually drawing, drawing pictures of lesions. And so I was the one who actually introduced a lot of new schematic diagrams in it. And I also wrote the book when it had four colors in it rather than just black and white. And the book became an incubator for the big book. So anything new we wanted to try, OK, we would try it here. And if it was it appeared successful, then we would do it in the 
big robins also. So I joined uh, Dr. Robbins and Dr. Cotran as the editor author in the third edition. Okay, you remember the first edition was Robbins only, second was Robbins and Cotran, the third one was Robbins, Cotran, and Kumar. Okay, they did this one. Okay, published in 1993. Yes, and then in basic pathology. Dr. Robbins and myself, and we wrote this many editions. So what I what I want to show you by this particular slide is not that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, how many, as many, how many, num not the numbers. As I put in the title of the slide, Robbins, Cotran, Kumar, a 23-year partnership made in heaven. Why do I say this is a partnership made in heaven? It's a partnership made in heaven because it was a partnership of equals. I was the junior most person. Dr. Cotran was a famous guy, but Dr. Robbins was famous for all the books that he had written. I was the little guy who, who joined the group. But you know, from day one, when I became a co-author, they treated me as equal. And I had the same rights to criticize, to modify, to tell them that this is not good, rewrite it and so on, as they had from me. This was based on trust and mutual respect. It's very important. A very important lesson I learned there was and open to junior people. Because a lot of good ideas come from junior people. Senior people are tired and old, and they, they don't have that many new ideas. The new ideas mostly come from young people. And I think this was the and this was the reason why we were able to remain partners for 23 years. Unfortunately, the partnership ended in 2000. Okay. But this this sustained this partnership and the excellence of the book sustained for this long because of because of the way we became equal partners in the process. There are very few multiple authors which last for this longer time because eventually somebody becomes jealous of somebody else. OK, and says, oh, you know, he looks smarter. He's getting more credit and it breaks. It didn't happen to us. It was, that's why I say it was made in heaven. The lesson in writing books was a lesson in living life. So when Ramsey Cotran died, unfortunately, in 2000, and so and we, which is when we had done the sixth edition, the seventh edition, I had to find two other people because Robbins was retired, Kotran had died, and I had to find two other people to be co-authors, and I had to find them. Fortunate, I found Dr. Abul Abbas, who was an Ames graduate, two years junior to me, and Nelson Fausto, who was in Seattle, head of the department. We jokingly said, look, this is a book written by three FMGs, three foreign medical graduates. He was from Brazil, from India. And, and you know, I felt it was so important to make the names of Rob live forever. That I changed the name of the book to Robbins and Cotran Pathology Pitch. Prior to this, this was the only name of the title of the book. I added this as a respect uh, so that their name would live forever because they had done so much to for, for, for this book. Well, fast forward, the 10th edition <clears throat> was published in 2020, and I'm proud to tell you that uh, South Asia edition is the first regional, regional edition of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of our textbooks. Well, we, I'm also happy to tell you that in last year we brought a brand new book. It's all digital, a very interactive, not yet available in India. I hope eventually it will be. This is Robin's Pathology, 42 years, 1979 to 2021, 19 editions, and the journey continues. And it's been a wonderful journey, and I hope to keep on and stay on this journey. My brains and my body allow. This is the current team. 
Abul Abbas, John Hospital, he's at, and Andrea, who was one of my residents and who is now a very distinguished educator at Duke University. So uh, I know I'm running. Vandana, how much time I have out left? So, um, ten so minutes. You can take uh, five minutes. Uh, yeah, sir, it's ten oh, minutes. minutes. Yeah, girls, you yeah. have a you have a clinic at nine o'clock sharp. I mean, those who have a clinic can girls leave. Can you know, they, they they don't have to get get late because of me. No, 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 sir. You can you can continue for ten minutes. We I will just ask them in message. You can start, sir. OK, OK, so I just want to give you some examples of what it was like working with these two two people. So working with Stanley Robbins, there is no good writing, only good rewriting Stanley Robbins. What happened? Well, when the first time I joined him as a co-author of basic pathology, as I told you, you know, he would write a chapter. I would write a chapter. He would exchange chapters. I would comment on his chapters. He would comment on my chapters. So I'd written a chapter, the first one that I wrote, I, it was on male genital system. And so, you know, I expected fully that he will, he will, he will make corrections, improvements, and I got it back. Then I sent him the second draft. And then I got, again, the same number of comments back. Then I sent him the third draft. It still had a lot of comments. At the bottom was written, there's no good writing, only good rewriting. This is Robin's way of saying that we have to aim for perfection and perfection is very hard to get. So you have to keep on trying, keep on trying. So that's that's what he meant with by he said there's no good writing, only good rewriting. And I tell this to my other co-authors now, uh, telling them how I learned this from Dr. Robbins. <clears throat> Ramsey Cotran. It's a phenomenal guy, absolutely phenomenal guy. Okay, very dear to me. So, you know, I remember that in one of the editions, uh, I, you know, when I was a student and even as a resident in pathology, I never understood the structure of the clavarulus. I always found it very confusing. Where is the mesangium? Where, are the, where, where is the base membrane? Where are the foot processes, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Because I didn't have a three-dimensional view of the clavarulus. It was always sort of EMs and so on and so forth, which are two-dimensionals. There's no thickness you could see. So I found this figure with somebody uh, in a rough sketch form and uh, and I sent it to the, our graphic artist and he made this figure. So Dr. Ramsey Kutran was a re renal pathologist, so I sent it to him and I said, what do you think about this? He said, well, this is a terrible picture. I said, why is it a terrible picture? He said, well, you know, it doesn't look like an electron micrograph. I said, that's exactly right. It doesn't look like an EM because EM is a two dimensional. This is three dimensional. For the first time, I can see where the mesangium is and where are the, where, how the base membrane comes here and have a, where, where the foot processes are and where is the moment space and so on and so forth. So he said, oh, well, if you insist, we will use it. OK, again, you know. Okay. And then six months later, he called me and said, I mean, I, that figure is very good. We will use it again. I said, what happened? He said, well, the residents and students told me it is very good. I said, well, that's good. I'm glad. Again, junior people telling the senior people. Aging books like aging authors can become obese. And, you know, <laughs> Joe, if we put this on a trolley <laughs> and a chain. And, you know, what happens is this, that books get thicker and thicker and thicker and long or, or, or multiple edition. We made the decision that we will not let this happen to Robbins. So over from the very beginning, almost to the present time, the number of pages in the book have never been between more than 1500, between 1400 and 1500, which is right now, I think the current edition is 1300 and something. Okay, And people don't realize how difficult this is because it's easy to add information, but you want to keep the number of pages reasonable, then you have to take out something. And taking out something is as hard, if not harder than adding things. Adding things is easy. What do you take out? So that the book still remains useful and still is not too heavy and not too big. So we we, we, we we spend a lot of time when we do the revision. We spend a lot of time struggling over what to remove and how much to remove. 
OK, I think this is probably the last slide. Uh, textbook of the future. Book publishing is in transition from physical to online. I mean, you can see this now. There are print editions and there are online editions. Our most recent book, uh, Robinson Science Technology, is almost completely online. Because online books can be updated. They do you don't have to wait for five years to review to revise them. And they have enhanced searching capabilities with direct links to journal databases. This is already possible. Many of the Elsevier books, which are Robinson is a publisher published by Elsevier, they are all bundled together. And you can go to uh, the uh, there's a certain website where you can put in the search in such thing, Staphylococcus, and it'll search microbiology, pathology, medicine, etc., etc., etc. Okay, and then you can decide which one you want to read and which one you don't want to read. And then online books can be linked to other online texts, other learning tools, virtual microscopes, quiz banks, images, image banks. So in our most recent book, Essential Pathology, there is a linked quiz bank and there's a linked image bank in there, something which we could not do on a print edition of the book. Online books will be customized and bundled to meet users' needs, just like the PCs are today. When you have to buy a PC, you don't go and say, give me, you know, there are three models, give me this one. No, you say, I want this much memory, I want this much RAM, I want these features, I want this software, I don't want this software. And then Dell or whatever the company is, they make it for you and send it to you. So in the same way, you know, in the future, what will happen is this. You know, the, the course directors of physiology, pathology, medicine will say, you want this portion of Guyton, this portion of Robbins, this portion of Harrison, this portion of Cecil, and we want that to be our book. Very easy. It's online. You just, the publisher just puts them all in a single, single uh, bundle, okay? All PDF files. And, you know, you, you know, some places may say we want only general pathology and not systemic pathology. Or some might say we don't want eye pathology in systemic pathology. OK, if you don't need it, you, you, should, you shouldn't have to buy it. And I think that in about 15, 20 years, there'll be no physical text. People feel very sad about it because. Well, there's a certain joy in holding a book and reading it. Which you don't get on the computer screen. Pathology of the future. This is for postgraduates since you're here. Genomics and proteomics will provide a personalized molecular diagnosis. Pathology report will include advice on targeted therapy. Say colonic carcinoma with mutational activation map kinase pathway responsive to joke Kumar's missile. Okay. Diagnosis will change from post symptomatic to pre symptomatic by genetic risk assessments. Will there be histopathology? Yes, there will be histopathology. There will still be histopathology and it will still be a useful tool, but it will become only one of the tools. And I say to you, the future is here. Are you ready? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It was it was like so good. So girls are clapping. I hope you can see them. There are lots of hearts flying and lots of <laughs> clapping. It was so beautiful, you know, uh, I just. Uh, I must tell you that it has been a tremendous um, journey that you have had. Wow, sir. Wow, uh, I should say there's nothing less than wow. And plus, you think what you told us is so beautiful, you know, uh, treated as equals and the younger generation will bring the ideas, always brings the ideas. And I do uh, truly follow that also. And uh, it's it's actually. Uh, it's so, uh, so good to hear that, you know, this is how evolution occurs. This is how the growth occurs. And like I have been reading Robbins from seventh edition, so and I have been uh, buying a new edition every time. I must say you that and I have loved the book. I hope every, all the girls do agree with me. The way the Robbins explains everything. No, there's no other textbook which is part it. No, no, no book matches it. I have read it through and through. It's beautiful. And the journey has been beautiful. And thank you for calling me that Jasus. I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I and think it's wonderful knowing you, sir. It's wonderful interacting with you. Thank you so much for coming here and addressing our girls. Our girls are very, very happy here. We have mm -hmm. our postgraduates and undergraduates both 
girls i hope you would have learned a lot and now you know why i always insist you read robins only <laughs> you understand it's it's not a book it's a it's an evolution it's the pathology thank you so much sir for being thank here thank you thank you thank you as i mentioned in the beginning okay i mean it is this kind of okay i if you calculate my a in 1944 i'm seven and i'm still writing and i am still writing only because of the love affection and the thank you thank you for all of that thank you all okay thank you so much sir okay all right i will let you go thank you so much sir